is about ORIS, a software tool for quantitative evaluation of non-Markovian systems. The goal of this presentation is to quickly illustrate the workflow of ORIS. In particular, ORIS can be used as a graphical user interface to analyze stochastic models and evaluate their properties, as a library to write Java programs that automate model construction and analysis, and as a toolkit to support the development of these programs within domain-specific tools. The ORIS workflow starts with specification and analysis of stochastic models through the graphical user interface. Models are defined using stochastic time petri nets, a formalism where tokens within circular places encode the logical location of the system, and transitions depicted as bars represent activities with deterministic or stochastic duration. The distinguishing feature of the formalism is that stochastic durations can be characterized by a non-Markovian distribution, possibly with firmly bounded support. This figure shows a very simple model of software rejuvenation. There are two concurrent loops, each made of sequential actions. The top loop models the aging process of a software component, which can be up, down after a failure, or under repair when the failure has been detected. The bottom loop models the periodic rejuvenation of the software component, performed, for example, through a restart. Given that the component will be unavailable during rejuvenation, there are parameters that can be optimized to improve system availability, for example, the rejuvenation period. After joining a model, the user can define quantitative properties, start the analysis using various engines, and visualize or export the results. The properties are defined using rewards, which are expressions combining constants and token counts. In this example, the system is not available when the component is not working, token in place down, when it is under repair, token in place detected, or under rejuvenation, token in place reg. The expected value of reward expressions can be evaluated at different time points, as in a figure in the middle, which plots the probability that the system is not working at time t. The expected value of reward expressions can also be used as a rate to accumulate rewards over time, as in the bottom figure, which plots the expected outage time up to time t. Note that the peaks in the figure in the middle and the steps in the bottom figure correspond to the rejuvenation times, when a system becomes unavailable. ORIS provides a suite of analysis engines, which are actually the result of 20 years of research. Each engine imposes different constraints on the underlying stochastic process, which result in different constraints on the distribution and result of transitions. The most distinguishing feature of ORIS is the implementation of transient and steady-state analysis of models with underlying Markov regenerative process and the implementation of transient analysis of models with underlying generalized semi-Markov process. Very often, the user is interested in the analysis not of a single scenario, but rather of multiple scenarios using multiple values of parameters, to automate the construction and analysis of stochastic models, ORIS provides a Java library term Serial. This library has a flexible and extensible software architecture, which facilitates the implementation of extensions of the model formalism, the implementation of new analysis algorithms, or even the implementation of software components that use models at runtime to adapt their operation to the environment. Finally, ORIS can be used as a toolkit to develop applications that construct and analyze models with a serial Java library. The user can define, analyze, validate models using the application, and then export them as Java code to build them with a serial library. Over the years, ORIS has been used to perform quantitative evaluation of non-Markovian models by several research works in different application domains. In particular, ORIS has been exploited in performability evaluation of railway signaling systems, evaluation of non-functional requirements of real-time software, performability evaluation of repair procedures for gas and water distribution networks, 
and online activity recognition for ambient assisted living. Indeed, ARIS can be used to support model-driven engineering approaches where stochastic models are derived from domain meta models and analyzed in automated manner for many parameter values. The example here is about a predictive analytics service to study passenger queues at a tram stop. The development of these services usually follows a process which starts in the ORIS application. Here we have the editor of the graphical user interface of ORIS. In this model, a tram arrives at regular intervals with random delays. In particular, transition service arrival nominal models tram arrivals at regular intervals. In fact, gray bars model deterministic transitions. Transition service arrival represents random delays that affect tram arrivals. In fact, black tick bars model general non-Markovian transitions. Passengers arrive as a Poisson process, which is represented by transition passenger arrival. In fact, white bars model exponential transitions. Due to social distancing, only up to 10 passengers are allowed to get on the tram. This is modeled by the update function of transition birding, which in fact removes tokens from place Q up to a maximum of 10. Finally, when 10 passengers are already waiting, newly arrived passengers abandon the station. This is modeled by the enabling function of transition passenger arrival, which in fact returns true if the number of tokens in place Q is lower than 20. As already observed, this model can be exported as Java source code. Then, the user can define metrics that support the use cases of interest. As an example, we perform regenerative transient analysis up to time 1000 using discretization step 10. And we compute the following rewards. So the first metric computes the expected Q sides. The second metric provides the probability of Q abandonment upon passenger arrival. And finally, the third metric computes the probability of at least one boarding denial upon tram arrival. The analysis takes less than two minutes and we already have here the results. So as expected, we can see that all metrics drop near the expected arrival times of the trams. The expected number of passengers in the queue, which is the green curve, oscillates between 10 and 20, which is the maximum queue size. And the probability of boarding denials, which is the red curve, is higher than the probability of queue abandonment, which is the blue curve. Once the model is defined and validated, an object-oriented domain model can be defined in Java to collect information for the different instances of the problem, with tram lines, tram stops, timetables, arrival rates, and so on. Now, the Java code exported from the initial ORIS model can be used to implement a model builder, which visits the domain model to create different instances of the ORIS model using the library. For instance, the analysis can be part of a facade object which can be used to evaluate metrics at runtime or offline. In our experience, ORIS can also serve to teach stochastic models and a design process of tools that use them. The ORIS app is freely available with tutorials on the website. The serial library is also available under an open source license with project examples and API documentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, so, is there any question for Laura? Maybe a very brief one. Uh, thank you for the video. Uh, I know that uh, ORIS is Java, so in that sense it's multi-platform. 
the GUI that you were showing, the was is how how is it implemented? Is it also multi-platform? Yeah, also the GUI is uh, implemented in Java. Yes, the, the the overall tool is implemented in Java. So both the the, the graphical user interface and the underlying library. And if I may, a very short follow up. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Studies on the memory consumption for uh, large things because you were showing some pretty large prep units for the general distribution. That's like a big monster in my book. So, uh, uh, how does that fare? Yeah, well, actually, uh, when uh, the model is uh, big, uh, the, the, the best way to use the tool is uh, to use the library uh, so that you can have experiments run on our server. So, of course. Uh, um, the complexity of uh, the analysis of a non-Markovian model depends on uh, many different factors, uh, both on the, the, the structure uh, of the model, uh, on the distribution of parameters, uh, and it also depends, if we perform transient analysis, uh, on uh, um, the number of time points for which we want to uh, compute the solution. So, I mean, the time limit divided by the number of time points. And so, depending on this, uh, the analysis of a model may take uh, tens of minutes. And so, in this case, <laughs> the best way to, 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 to use the tool is to have experiments run on a server in a batch mode. I'm using two hours of simulation, so tens of minutes. It's uh, no, <laughs> it depends, of course. So, of course, it yeah. may take also more, but typically, if uh, so, um, it depends on the model. So we, we, we cannot say what is the maximum time in principle. No, of course, of course. For simulation, it is different. You you are, uh, I mean, uh, uh, selecting how much time you want to simulate your model. So you can control the computation time in a different way, I think. Thank you, Laura. Thanks. OK. Um... So I, I have a question. Uh, the tool is very nice uh, and there's a lot of features. I, I was wondering, uh, do you use it for teaching and uh, how difficult it is for students to uh, get acquainted with the, the tool to, to be able to start and doing something? Uh, well, actually, it depends on uh, um, the kind of exercise that uh, they, they, they want to do. But actually, uh, we uh, have been able to, 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 to use it to, uh, I mean, uh, um, define uh, models of uh, embedded systems, for instance, uh, and uh, perform uh, the analysis. So, of course, uh, uh, the modeler uh, may have some expertise, and so it, it depends on uh, actually on the, the, the kind of uh, uh, system that you are going to, to model. But in our experience, uh, uh, I mean, after uh, some lessons that show that the, the formalism and uh, the general idea of the uh, analysis techniques that uh, we used to solve them, the students are able to uh, perform uh, some modeling and analysis exercises. 